fine good afternoon everyone this is patricia and i'm traveling for history what i'm walking on here is a former railroad bed railroad bed you say, what a railroad bed qu'est-ce que c'est well it's tracks would have been here leading to our destination and um I'm going to go ahead and walk down this path. I'm not sure how far it is. And then uh, once we're there, I'll show you the, uh, the, uh, what we're here for. All right. So I'm going to uh, pause this video now. And when we get there, like I said, you'll see what, what we're here for. Hang on. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. What is this? Let's get a little closer. So you get the full effect of the entrance, right? Wow. Now, if you're visiting Vermont, I know that you're salivating, thinking, oh, it's a covered bridge. And that's certainly quintessential Vermont, along with, oh, look at this foliage. Woohoo! Wow, foliage and a covered bridge. Nirvana. Well, this is not just any covered bridge. This is the East Shoreham Covered Railroad Bridge. And uh, we're going to talk more about that in just another moment. Well, greetings all. This is Patricia and I am traveling for history. I'm in East Shoreham, Vermont today, and uh, this is the longest drive so far I've taken to go see something really interesting. And wow, this was worth the price of admission. This uh, was uh, this drive was over an hour long. And what, are we, what do we have st in front of us here? This is the East Shoreham Covered Railroad Bridge. It is uh, one of two left in the state with this this particular how trust system inside and i'll be telling you more about that in just a moment but uh, this was a railroad bridge there are no more tracks they were removed years ago but uh, let's uh, let's get a little closer and um, i'll be telling you about the river because i love the name of this river it's uh, called the lemon fair river so i'm going to show you on um, i'll show you both sides of it from here, being really careful because the edge is sort of steep. There's that side. Can't see the water through here, but through the bridge, thankfully. And uh, you don't want to see the river. <laughs> you don't want to dr driving into the river. Nope. And then there's this side over here. So uh, I was wondering how this river got its name. And I have to say my imagination was a bit more interesting than the reality, but that's often the case. So this is known as the Lemon Fair River. And it's a river in both Addison and Rutland counties here in Vermont. So apparently the name comes from an Anglic Angli anglicization of three French words, les monts verts, which means literally the mountains green. But uh, if we can think about it, stretch our imaginations a little bit for uh, les monts, which would be lemon, and vert for fair, so lemon fair river. Now, the Lemon Fair begins in the fields and farmlands of southern Orwell, uh, Vermont. From there, it flows north, gaining tributaries, eventually draining into the Otter Creek in Weybridge, Vermont. The Lemon Fair is home to many forms of wildlife, including fish such as bass, northern pike, and bullhead. However, unlike other rivers around, it does not drain mountainous areas, uh, mountainous, only farmland. As such, the water quality is poorer than other rivers. But um, I'm here with a friend today, and uh, she was pointing out these um, lily pads. First time either of us has ever seen them in the wild. So, uh, oh, in fact, actually, we can see them right here. I just realized they're down in front of us, too. So let me uh, zoom in for us. And my handy-dandy pointer, those right there, lily pads. How cool is that? Well, I think it's cool anyway. All right, now looking inside this uh, bridge a bit, uh, because who doesn't love that? There is this uh, sign up here. There is this sign up here. So let me uh, zoom in for you. Yeah, I know, you can't really see that. My apologies, but I'll, I'll read it to you. You always have the option, too, of pausing the video and then pinching the screen to see something better. It, it says, East Shoreham Railroad Bridge, built 1897 by Rutland Railroad, How Trust Design. 
a national registered engineering landmark owned by the state of Vermont Division for Historic Preservation. Please help preserve this bridge. I'm happy to help preserve this bridge. So let me tell you some more history about the bridge and then also about this how trust design and why that's uh, so fascinating. All right, so some more history. Uh, so, um, according to, now, according to the State Historic Marker, it says this is one of two of these Hus tr uh, Howe Trust bridges. But uh, here, it says it's the state's only surviving example of a wooden Howe Trust railroad bridge here in Vermont. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. The East Shoreham Bridge is located in a rural area of southeastern Shoreham on the Lemon Fair River. It is located about 0.2 miles or 0.32 kilometers west of the Shoreham Depot Road and is accessible on foot via the former railroad right-of-way, uh, now along the bridge, a state-owned property. It is a single-span Howe Truss structure, 109 feet or 33 meters in length, and set on dry-laid stone abutments faced in concrete. The trusses consist of wooden diagonals and iron rod verticals. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a few minutes because it's kind of dark in there, and, um, but it's interesting. It's an interesting technology for its day. The bridge has a total width of 20 feet or 6.1 meters and an internal width of 13.5 feet or 4.1 meters. The railroad tracks, which had been removed, were original, originally laid directly on the deck timbers. The bridge's exterior consists of vertical board siding covered by a metal roof. And we can see the vertical board siding right here. Right? And I cannot capture the roof from, uh, from this position. And um, I'll not be able to capture that at all for you, actually. But you can look at other pictures uh, on Google Maps. In fact, uh, you can see some people who've flown drones, you see the, the bridge, uh, excuse me, the uh, metal roof on the bridge easily from that. The bridge was built in 1897 by the Rutland Railroad Company for service on its Addison Branch Line. Because of the line's relatively light traffic, it was not judged necessary to go to the expense of building an iron bridge, resulting in the construction of one of the state's few surviving 19th century covered railroad bridges. It remained in service until 1951 when the line was abandoned. The state acquired the bridge and surrounding land in 1972. All right, so let me see if I can explain how the How Trust um, worked. So we have the diagonal boards here and then we have the iron rods here. The iron rods work under tension whereas the diagonal boards work under compression. What's, uh, what's particularly good about the, this truss, well several things actually. So first of all it was deemed strong enough a wooden bridge with this, these iron rods were, uh, was uh, deemed strong enough for railroad bridges. Uh, so I've already told you that this line was um, not used a lot. So it just didn't seem to be cost effective to build an iron bridge across it because that's very expensive. Uh, a wooden bridge would be considerably less expensive and these diagonal boards are or timbers, <laughs> these are timbers, are uh, longer than these vertical rods. So they were able to use the wood, which was cheap and plentiful, and not as much iron, which was expensive. In order to tighten up the, uh, the tension again, all they had to do was tighten these bolts. And this was considered much easier than, I think it was called the Pratt Truss which is kind of interesting. The Pratt truss was actually better to use for iron bridges than the, um, than the uh, Howe truss. Pretty fascinating stuff. Um, and this did receive an engineering award. So William Howe in 1840, so he was a construction contractor in Massachusetts, and he patented his Howe truss design. It was a... Uh, so popular that he was able to form the Howe Bridge Works Company. And uh, then one of his workers, Massa Jones, 
um, paid him forty thousand dollars in 1842 for the uh, patent, and uh, so forty thousand dollars in eighteen in 1840 uh, is was worth in in 2020 one million thirty six thousand dollars. So. Amasa Jones had a financial backer, and the two of them formed a company where they built these uh, Howe Trust bridges across New England. So, pretty interesting. Um, in 1846, uh, William Howe patented, patented a newer version of his Howe Trust bridge, but unfortunately, he suffered a carriage accident and died in 1852. It's a real pity that... Uh, I hope he got to enjoy at least some of that money that he, uh, he earned and received from selling his first patent. But, um, but he didn't get to build as many bridges as he had really wanted. Um, but he did build houses and all that too. So let's take a closer look at these iron pipes. Interesting, no? I'm sure you can hear that metal sound. If I use my metal can against it. And it vibrates pretty easily. Stop that. Um, and as we look up, turn my light on. You see the top there. So it appears, well, it's funny, when I think of a truss, and my friend here too, uh, when we think of trusses, we think of ceilings. And, and you can see on this ceiling, um, trusses. But, uh, Let's take a look, see, at, um, at a replacement uh, diagonal piece that was installed. And I'm going to go ahead and lean against one of these braces here. Um, so we can see this was installed in 2007, this replacement, uh, versus the one that's we weathered. Um, a local company did that. I can't uh, see the sign. It's too far away for me to film for you. And um, it looks like the trusses themselves were also replaced because that, that wood is not weathered either. Um, but it's pretty interesting nonetheless. So also interesting about the Howe Truss bridge design was how it could be prefabricated. You know, so it could be built off-site and uh, put together on-site. It could be put on, so built off-site, pr presumably in a factory, or a mill, and then uh, shipped in those pre-done forms on a, on a train to wherever the location they needed. Uh, so let's take a walk through the, uh, through the bridge, and uh, I'll look down for you. You can see the, actually, the river there. See that green down there? See that green, that shimmery? This, that's the Lemon Fair River. And uh, I'm not going to walk on those timbers so you can get a better view. Uh, I'm just afraid. So, c'est la vie. But we'll uh, take a look see. Uh, in fact, let's look out the window over here. We enjoy the look of the Lemon Fair River. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? Wow. So I'm going to put a link, some links in the description below for you. Uh, a link to the nine-page document that tells you all about the How Trust Bridge. Uh, let me see the How Trust uh, How Trust uh, design. You read of all those technical specs. Hopefully, you'll understand them better than I. But uh, I found it interesting reading, regardless, and uh, you may as well. And there, you'll note there's a smaller bridge. Not covered over there. Uh, that green that you see. In fact, let me get my pointer up here. It's right um, over there, that bridge. Drove over that by accident. Oopsie. <laughs> but um, coming near a road there, too. But uh, we can see how well built this is, and look how thick those timbers are. I mean, wow, how thick those timbers are. Now, um, 1897, they probably still had uh, natural timber 
here. That's my guess. Could be wrong. I know in Burlington, natural timber was gone by 1850. And, and look at this. Just look at this. So beautiful. I love stuff like this, in case you haven't noticed by now. Another view of the river. And all this beautiful wildlife. Wow. Trees. I love nature, don't you? Now, certainly the uh, roof would have kept uh, snow and um, uh, off the tracks, and therefore ice would not have formed on the tracks, because you don't want ice on tracks. Um, and then, as you come along here, get off the light. We can see some more uh, railroad ties over here, including over there, and over here. And the train would have continued through here. Something also to think about is, um, let me see if I can film this so we can see it well, is the design. I mean, you know, they don't have to have this design here. See right up there, all that? It's not necessary, but they have it anyway. I'll show you the exterior, some closer shots of the exterior on the other end, and uh, you'll see what I mean. I mean. Well, you'll see, you can see some of it here, too. Um, now, now, that wood right there would be part of a brace for this uh, part right here, but they didn't need to make it curved. It could have been just squared off, um, but they made it look nice. Uh, something... Um, much more common then than now. Now it's very utilitarian, isn't it? Um, and then coming over here. Oh, trash. For Pete's sake, people. You can see how thick that is right there. All right. And let's continue. I, I recommend coming out here. I mean, why not? Why not? It's... Um, it was a beautiful drive for foliage, and it's, it's, there's a lot of sounds of nature going on, lots of ducks. And another shot of that ceiling. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly functional. But there's form here, too. Let's go back over here. Because we can see there are floors, right? And they're the same, um, same both sides here. But then there's those timbers there. And, uh, and we can see these, these diagonal boards, too. Uh, one, two, three together. And they're pretty thick. Um, Maybe six inches. Lots of folks have carved their initials over time. Let me turn this off so you can see it better. Yeah. So, pretty beautiful. This was worth the trip, coming out here to see this, to be honest. And let me see if I can get a shot of this sign since I'm up in the bridge now. If you want to see my pictures, I'll be posting them to Instagram, Traveling for History. 
or you can uh, check them out on my Facebook page, Traveling for History. By the way, if you like the content I'm providing, please subscribe to my channel. I have 75 people now, 75 subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate your dedication and desire to uh, subscribe. So once you subscribe, you click the notification bell and you will be notified each and every time I upload a brand spanking shiny new video, which as of uh, October 9, 2021, and today is October 9, it's a Saturday, I upload every day of the week, at least once a day, sometimes more than that. All right, so thanks so much for coming along with me. I appreciate it. And here we can see the rest of the railroad bed. That's the way we came in. Um, you have a great day. Bye.